Welcome back to another video. In this one, we're gonna talk about the best export settings inside Premiere Pro CC, and I'm also gonna talk about the new hardware encoding feature for exporting videos much faster. It takes advantage of your GPU, so let's get started. Let's say you finished your edit, you said you're in and out points, and you've started to go to the export settings, and you're not really sure what export settings you want. You could be exporting for YouTube, or you may have limited hard drive space and you wanna save your files in a format that allows for really small file sizes while also maintaining a higher quality. There are of course many other reasons why you may want certain settings when you're exporting. So in this video, we'll focus on three formats that I typically use for the videos that I create. So let's first start off with the format H.264. You've probably heard about this before. It's, I would say, the most commonly used codec. This one will compress your files pretty well. It will give you a somewhat small file size, but the quality will be affected to some degree. So let's select that one. Now there are a bunch of presets that come with Premiere Pro, such as the YouTube ones or you know the high quality versions. Now they will work fine. However, I like to save my own presets and that way I know exactly the settings that I'm using so that I get the results that I want every single time. So let's go to match source high bitrate and then we'll change some settings down here. So if you're exporting at 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080, you can leave that as is. And then make sure the frame rate matches the source footage you're working with or your sequence settings. Then for the field order, we can keep it at progressive, aspect ratio square. And then we wanna make sure that render at maximum depth is selected and then also use maximum render quality. And then in recent versions of Premiere Pro, they introduced the hardware encoding performance setting. And when hardware encoding is selected, this will allow you to export your files much quicker. In order to get hardware encoding, you have to make sure that the settings below here are set to either one pass or CBR. Let's change it to CBR, which is constant bitrate, which is essentially the quality per second. And ultimately, if you set this number high, you'll have a larger file size. And if you set it low, you'll have a lower file size. All right, so since we're exporting 1080p footage, I will typically set this to around 26. Some other editors may prefer a lower number or a higher number. I find if I set it higher than this, I don't really notice a difference. However, if I set it lower, then I will start to notice a difference in the shadows or during fades uh, or transitions. So for 1080p, that will be good. Now, if you're exporting at 4K, then you can change it to 3840 by 2160. And in that case, because of the higher resolution, you would then need to increase your bitrate. So I would just go all the way to 50. And then for the audio tab, I normally just set it to AAC, 48,000 Hertz and stereo with the audio quality set to high with 320 kilobits per second. And then from there, I'd save a preset by clicking on this preset button right here. And then I would give it a specific name, so 4K 23.976. And then I'd make another preset with the 1080 settings. Now, as I mentioned, the H.264 codec is really, really common. It does a pretty good job of compression, but the quality isn't as good as you can get it. So if you are working on projects where you need to keep the best quality you possibly can, you should probably consider a different codec. And in that case, I would choose a format that can work with ProRes. So in that case, I would go down to QuickTime. And then once again, we're not gonna select a preset, we will make our own. So we'll go down to the Video tab section and under Video Codec, we will choose ProRes 422HQ. And then once again, we'll do a 3840 by 2160 4K resolution. We'll make sure that Render at Maximum Depth is selected. We'll keep our export color space at Rec 709. And then in the video tab, this is all you need to set up because the Apple ProRes codec is a really high quality codec, but it will make very large file sizes. So only use this if you need the highest quality you can get and you have a lot of hard drive space. So at the bottom here, we'll select use maximum render quality. And then in the audio tab, we'll keep everything at default and we can export that preset as well. And now I'll show you the third way of exporting that I use, which is typically for Instagram stories or TikTok videos. And that will be the codec H.265. Now you can consider this the modern day version of the H.264 codec. It's a much better codec than the H.264 in terms of the compression it does to keep small file sizes while keeping the quality of the video really high. When it was first announced a few years ago, people were saying that it has a better compression than H.264, but it'll keep your quality like ProRes. Now, after I've tested it quite a bit, it does depend on the bitrate you set. 
So if you set a really low bitrate, of course, you're not gonna have footage that has that quality you'd expect from ProRes. Now, before we make an H.265 preset, I wanna say that this codec is really process heavy. It will make your computer work really hard. You'll hear the fans go on most likely. So if you're exporting videos using H.265 and then editing them later, it's gonna be a tougher codec to work with, so it might play back a little more choppy. And if you're not using a really high-end computer, it'll probably take a little longer to export as well. All right, so let's select the H.265. We'll keep it at 1080p. We'll check render at maximum depth. And once again, we do have hardware encoding, so this specific codec, just like H.264, can take advantage of your graphics card to export things much quicker. And then under bitrate encoding, we'll change it to constant bitrate. We'll set the quality to higher. And then for the bitrate, as you'll remember, for the H.264 codec preset we made, we set it to 26. However, for H.265, because it's so good at compressing into smaller file sizes while also maintaining a high quality, for this one, I only set it to around 12, which isn't even half the bitrate of what we set H.264 at. And then as mentioned, because the codec is so good at compression, the footage quality will stay high. So then I'd go ahead and make a preset for that one. And once again, if we're doing 4K, I would set it to 3840 by 2160. We'd keep render at maximum depth. Enable hardware encoding if your graphics card allows it. Keep it at constant bitrate. I find 20 to be enough, but you can set it to the max 25. And then you could save your 4K preset. And then since I use H.265 for exporting videos for Instagram or TikTok, I would keep things at just 1080p. But as you'll notice, I flip them so the width is 1080 and the height is 1920, which gives me the vertical display, which is what TikTok and Instagram prefer. Now, of course, this clip was shot horizontally, so if I wanted it to fill the full vertical frame, I'd have to scale in. And then for YouTube, I typically use the settings we created in H.264, or the ProRes settings we created in QuickTime. If you have a lot of hard drive space, you can use the ProRes version as that will be the highest quality. However, for 99% of people, H.264 will be more than enough for YouTube. All right, so those are the best settings to use in Premiere Pro for exporting videos. So if you haven't updated to the recent versions of Premiere Pro, I would highly suggest you do that so you can take advantage of the hardware encoding and tap into your graphics card's potential. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe to see more videos from us in the future. We have over 60 other filmmaking tutorials that you can learn from, so definitely subscribe if you're into that stuff, and we will see you next time.